Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of A Year of Writing. My name is Natalie and I am your host. How do you become a more productive writer? I know this is a question that a lot of you have been asking yourself. I believe me, I have too. Is it possible to go from being a full-time employee to a full-time writer in just one year? Let's find out in A Year of Writing, a podcast about writing, productivity and marketing. My name is Natalie and I am your host. I know a lot of you have been asking yourself, how can I get more productive? I have been asking myself that question a lot too. And uh, as you may know, since you're listening to this podcast this year, I'm going all in on my writing journey and I want to see how far I can get ahead in my career if I go all in on my writing. And I mean, going all in means that I need to be more productive. So productivity is a big part of this. In today's episode I'm going to go through a a few things I've learned from uh, other authors and productivity experts and stuff out there. I love reading non-fiction books on productivity, on personal development and stuff like that and lately I've been reading a lot of books on productivity and there are a few few things that I've actually implemented into my own life. So today we're going to go through some of them and I'm going to give you some advice on how you might be able to get more productive. Here are five ways to become a more productive writer. Create a morning routine that includes writing. You should have a morning routine that boosts your productivity and creativity. For me, this includes uh, writing morning pages, something I learned from Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way. And I meditate every morning, something I don't know what I got that one from, but a lot of books on uh, health and uh, productivity, longevity, whatever you read. A lot of books talk about the benefits of meditation and I agree, I would not be where I am today if I did not meditate. It's uh, one of the best ways to just clear my head and to get out of, you know, those thought loops that sometimes, that at least I can end up in. Um, Especially since, you know, as a writer, I think a lot, I'm in my own head a lot and meditation helps me see that thoughts are just thoughts and you know it's okay to let them go I don't need to overanalyze everything number four another way to become more productive is to use the Pomodoro method it's uh, when you set a timer for 25 minutes and during those that block of time you focus really really hard and you just do whatever you are set out to do so Maybe it's writing, maybe it's researching, maybe it's editing. During this time, it's really, really important that you don't have any distractions. So put your phone on silent mode, turn off Wi-Fi, actually turn off like your chat programs and email programs and stuff like that, because that will distract you. It's super important that you let yourself have the time to actually be in the moment. I mean, I think this is a mistake that a lot of us do sometimes, that we think we can multitask and I'm just gonna send a few messages to a friend over there. And so we don't get into the state of high, uh, of heightened focus that we wanna do. We wanna be like deep focus, super deep. Because when we're in that, that state, that's when we can go into flow. And if you ever, have you ever been in writer's flow? Because if you haven't, Oh my God, you have to go there because it's so amazing. Okay, I feel I'm getting a bit off track. I'm going to talk about flow in just a second. I'm just going to wrap it up with with the Pomodoro method. Uh, And after you've been focusing for 25 minutes, then you get a five minute break. And after that, you continue for 25 minutes and you do this like four times. So it's uh, two hours. And after that, you get a longer break. I think it's uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes. I'm not sure. But uh, I use this all the time. I use it when I work, when I write. Yeah, anytime I need to focus. And I feel like, like you know, the things are trying to distract me. Um, I, yeah, I love that method. So back to writer's flow or flow. Okay, I'm not sure about the scientific parts about ending up in flow. But I do know what it feels like. Um, it's... It's, uh, I mean, it's amazing. You get into such a deep state of creating that it's like all of the, the world around you just disappears. And, you know, you sort of emerge with your story. And I don't know, time flies. You produce a lot. I think, yeah, once I ended up almost writing half a book in Jury Flow, uh, non arrival a thousand years ago, but it was amazing never gotten into the, the <coughs> flow 
for that long a period of time. I was in flow for like six hours, but it was crazy and it was amazing. So how to become more productive is one thing that I really, really, uh, that I'm really interested in and I want to learn more about. And that is why I have decided to challenge myself and to go all in on writing. And I've put up a few goals for myself to achieve from it's it's starting from the 1st of July 2023 and one year from that date and my goal is to write every day for a year which means it this includes Christmas this includes vacations so every day every day another goal is to finish two or more manuscripts and send it to either agents or publishers no genre specific uh it doesn't matter if I write fiction or non-fiction or whatever um I plan to write both, so we'll see. Another goal for me is to post on Instagram and TikTok every day for a year. This is something that I've been doing for quite some time, and I, at time, and I've noticed that it really helps boost my following and engagement. And for me, social media is a way to reach out to new followers and you meet new people, get to know more people. So building an author brand and getting more followers is something I'm going to talk about in the fourth episode of the po- this podcast which is about author branding and how you can build a following even though you're not published yet and stuff like that. So if you're interested in those things, listen to that episode. Another goal for my writing year is uh, to launch this podcast. And I plan to release an episode every second week. So yeah, that's a lot of work. Um, but I look forward to it. It's been so far, it's been a lot of fun just doing the research and planning the episodes and stuff like that. And the fifth goal, the fifth goal for me this year is to post at least once a week on my blog or website. Why did I put up these, these goals? Let me break them down for you. Writing every day. Why do I want to write every day? Because all the time I spend writing increases my chances of getting more books published and to get a bigger audience and reaching out for more people. And it also makes me a better writer. I think it was Neil Gaiman who said in his masterclass that said that to become a great writer, you have to write as much as you can all of the time. And also it makes a perfect sense for me right now in this stage in my life to focus on my career Um I'm really, yeah, blessed to be able to do that. And how do I do to be able to write every day? I, um, I've I've read the book. Uh, I've read a book called Five Thousand Words Per Hour by Chris Fox. You should check it out. It's a really good book about increasing your writing speed. And he actually claims that if you increase it enough, you m- might be able to reach five thousand words per hour. I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. And uh, But the thing he talks a lot about is to be able to write faster and to become a better writer. You need to have a, a, a writer routine. One way to do that is to write every day. You can choose to write half an hour a day or like me, I, I write one hour a day. So I get up one hour earlier than I did before I started writing every day and get up and sit down and write. First thing I do in the morning, why do I do it? this early in the morning because there are no distractions yet. I am not allowed to check social media or anything until I've written, which is good because otherwise you might end up like scrolling through TikTok for hours. So mm -mm. in the morning, it's like my head is all clear and there are no worries or stress about work or about other things in my life. So I can focus on a manuscript. And since I write every day, I don't have to go back and reread stuff. I know where I am. I know what's going to happen next. And once I've uh, written like a first draft, maybe I'll let that one rest for a bit and edit some other draft I have or whatever. Or I will go back and start edit that one straight away. I have a quite a rigorous uh, editing routine, which you can find in my ebook on four ways to get more productive, which you'll find at blackdiary.se slash productivity writing every day it has helped me be so much more productive and it's something that like if you're able to just get up half an hour earlier and do it the first thing you do i mean even if you have kids make ask your partner to take the kid in the morning that's like when you have your slot of time where you can write because i've told my partner that during this time i don't want to be disturbed so please don't like talk to me or tell me stories or stuff let me focus on writing 
and yes, you can bring me coffee. That's okay. But and after that, we can talk and like have a morning routine together. But writing every day is one of the greatest things I've done so far. And I mean, during on this podcast, I will be talking about how how it is doing this over the long course of time. Because right now I've been doing it for like um, when producing this podcast, I've been doing it for about 80, 80 days or something. Um, and I started writing just for half an hour. So one hour, I'm not sure how many days I've done, but over a month and uh, yeah, it's going great so far. Even when I visited my parents, uh, I still went up early, you know, chose to woke up early just to write. And goal number two, finishing two or more manuscripts and sending it to publishers. Well, well, l- like a dream for me is to one day become a full-time writer. And the way to do that is to write and to publish as many books as I can. Uh, so if I publish multiple books, that means that I can get there faster, I guess. And why do I have the goal to post on social media every day? Uh, and post on Instagram and TikTok every day. The reason why is that I want to build an audience um, that, that that are interested in me as a writer, in my career, and that might one day be, be interested in buying my books, to be honest. Uh, since I work with uh, marketing professionally, that's my day job. Uh, I also know that if you want to grow on these channels, these channels, you need to have your niche. You need to have one niche. You need to post frequently. You need to make sure to use all the new features that the platforms uh, introduce. You need to stay up to date. And also it helps me continuously think about creating. So even sometimes when I'm at the gym or when I'm writing, I don't know, my morning pages or whatever I'm doing, I'm always thinking, oh, wait, can I get this? Can I maybe film a time lapse and use reuse the content for later or stuff like that which actually means that I'm always in the mindset of creating I guess and that's awesome it also like posting as much as possible also helps me go back and see what kind of stuff that actually flies like what do I want what what kind of posts does my audience respond to do they like the humorous uh, videos when I make like author memes or do they want more, do you guys want more educational stuff? Do you want me to talk about how I market my own books or what do you want to know? I mean, I'll see that in the statistics in the apps, which is great. And I'm, as I told you, I'm going to talk a lot more about this in episode four of the podcast. So tune in for that one. So launching this podcast, I actually got the idea for launching a podcast quite recently. And I think it's a very good fit into my overall content plan. Like, And and if you have any questions or any suggestions on what you want me to do in the future, reach out to me on social media. I'm at blackdiary.se on Instagram, writers, yeah. And I also feel like there's uh, room for more podcasts about writing because a lot of the podcasts today that I found about writing and that I've been listening to, all of them are interview podcasts, which is great. But if I don't know the one that's being interviewed, then I'm not as inclined to listen because I'd rather, you know, I want to hear experts on the topic, I guess. It's also an opportunity for me to learn more about writing and about uh, writing and marketing and, you know, because for each of these episodes, I have to do a lot of research. I'm scripting down what I, what I plan to say and try to make it as interesting as possible. And it's also a way for me to learn how to become a better speaker and practice. I mean, I both produce this as a podcast with just sound, but I also plan to post it as a video on YouTube. So it's a way for me to get more comfortable in front of a camera. If you have any questions or any suggestions on what you want me to do in the future, Reach out to me on social media. I'm at blackdiary.se on Instagram. Um, you can email me on a year of writing at blackdiary.se. And yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. And the last one, why would it, do I want to post on uh, a text on my blog every day? No, every week. Oh my God, every day would be exhausting. The reason why is for me to, of course, talk about writing, learn about writing, but also reach more potential readers um, and launch. If, if I'm going to launch some kind of business and actually like help people with proofreading or ghostwriting or marketing, then I need to have content that 
gifts for free that I can give you uh, as an expert on those topics. So writing a blog is a very good way to do that. And it's also a great way to, for me to do research about stuff that I want to know more about. Like how do you write a dynamic dialogue? It's perfect. It's a perfect uh, thing to post on a blog, but it's also a perfect thing yeah, to do research on. So it's a win-win. At the start of this episode, I talked a little bit about habits and uh, how you can use them to become a more productive writer. If you haven't read Atomic Habits by James Clear, read it. It's one of the best books I've read probably ever. Um, it, he talks about like how habits, how, how these small habits that we don't even think about accumulate over time and what they will do for you when it comes to whatever your dreams and visions are for your life. So one example that he has is... Uh, you know, if you eat un unhealthy, you maybe you're having a bad day and you buy chocolate. So you eat chocolate and um, you feel a little bit better, but then maybe your blood sugar crashes again and you need to eat something more. And if you keep on doing this, like choosing to eat unhealthy things, because the problem with habits, the reason why a lot of us don't have uh, really good, really healthy habits is because it takes such a long time before we see results. So if you eat unhealthy or even if you eat healthy, you won't see any results. Not the first day, not the second day, not the third, not after a week, maybe not even after a month. The problem with habits is that you don't see results. Uh, like it takes a lot of time before you see results, both good habits and bad habits. It's like the example with if you get a dollar that doubles, uh, a dollar that doubles every day for 30 days, would you take the dollar or would you take a million dollars? And a lot of people are inclined to choose the million dollars because it seems like it's more. But the dollar that doubles every day for 30 days is not like until the last three days or something that the money actually increases. And then it starts increasing a lot. So uh, at the end of the 30 days, that $1 would be worth, that doubled would be worth over 100. Oh my God, that's too many zeros. Yeah, uh, over a billion, I guess. Over or maybe 100 billions. I don't know. It's so many zeros that I can't even count it. Um, and... That's the thing here with habits that you don't see the result. So a lot of people give up like just before things actually start happening, which is such a shame. One way that you can get motivated to get healthier habits or better habits or like get into the habit of writing or whatever is to use these like you can use nudging on yourself. So if I'm... If I should remember to take my allergy pills, uh, I have grass allergy and, and pollen. I don't know if it's the English word, but anyways, uh, if I need to remember to take that at lunch, then maybe I'll just put the box at the counter because otherwise I'll forget that I need to take it while eating or whatever. Another way that you can actually motivate yourself to, well, let's say, go to the gym is that you can reward yourself afterwards. So I love uh, going juicing the sauna, which means that I uh, let myself have a mini spa after going to the gym when I decided that I wanted to get in shape. Went to the gym and then afterwards, yeah, I was able to sit in the sauna and just enjoy a great feeling of warmth. And you should never underestimate the accumulating effects of habits. Like, if you actually think about getting in shape, if you get in shape, you'll probably eat healthier. And if you eat healthier, you will you will probably sleep better. And when you sleep better, you will have more energy to do the things you want to do. Maybe you'll focus better. Maybe you'll get more done at work. Maybe you'll write more. The effort you, yeah, the extra energy you had for work leads to a promotion. So you can never say that, you, you should never think that the small things don't matter because they do. They do, and especially over time. That's why it's really important to have healthy habits that support your uh, creativity and your productivity in like the creativity and productivity in your life. And for me, the ways that I have created habits that really support them, that makes me have energy to go up an hour earlier every day to write is that I started meditating. Uh, it was really long, like over a year ago now I started meditating. I write morning pages that I talked about from 
Julia Cameron. I uh, work out a lot, usually after work. So I get up early, I write, then I write my morning pages, then I meditate, and then I start my morning routine. After that, I go to work. I work for eight hours. And when I'm done working, I'm usually like, my head is quite tired. So then I usually go to the gym and work out, which makes my head, you know, clear up. Then, yeah, in the evenings, I'll probably read or maybe write some more or spend time with my partner. Or friends and honestly and then I go to bed quite early I will read before falling asleep get my eight hours of sleep and start again I've also noticed that there are a lot of things that affect how I sleep so if I eat too late in the evening I won't sleep that well if I drink alcohol I won't sleep that well and stuff like that also affects how much I'm able to how productive I will be I heard some quotes I don't remember where but that the things we do today uh, will affect how we feel and how we perform tomorrow. And I really, really believe that. So if you want to be productive, like the days ahead, make sure do stuff, maybe, you know, make sure to do stuff today that will help you feel better tomorrow. I think a lot of us also, like we stress around all day and then we think that when we get to the weekend, we will sleep in, we will do this and this and this. And like we charge to have energy to do it to work and maybe write and that's I don't think it works like that like if you stress all week long and then you think you're going to recharge during the weekend then uh, you won't have energy you won't feel motivated and also like you'll probably wake up early during the weekend because all, all the stress that is still in your body so nah take care of yourself today and I found this quote online that I really like and it said a great a great way to increase writing productivity is to set a goal and then make it public so that others can hold us accountable and I guess that's what I'm doing with I'm not sure if I actually told you so right now during this summer um, I've already started I plan to write a book in four months so from idea to finished book well yeah I'm gonna send it to publishers <laughs> uh, in less than four months and um, how do I do this it's well first of all I mean I made the goal public so there's an actual deadline and I've also booked an editor that I have to send the manuscript to like in the middle of the summer so it has to be done by then and, and one thing I learned from uh, another a great writer that I know uh, her name is Kristina Aman she's a Swedish author um she talked about creating a no how how she uh, plans her writing and like what kind of deadlines she puts up for her writing and I got super inspired so I took what I learned from her and from what I learned from five thousand words per hour and created a big spreadsheet where I planned out all my chapters for the novel which is you know I used to be a pantser but I realized that if I want to become a lot more productive I need to become a, a planner because pantsing is fun and it feels very creative but in the end I you know you have to dissect the manuscript you have to go back and you have to edit so many times for it to actually become great so I do think that uh, planning ahead of time like making sure that the plot t twists and stuff are at the right place and that, that the story holds together and that the car character arcs hold. I think that's a great way to become more productive. But anyways, this uh, spreadsheet that I've created, it's like it, it has how much I should write in average every day, every week. It has all the deadlines, like from this date, I'm supposed to start editing. From that date, I'm going to send it to the editor and then I'm going to edit once more. So it's a very rigorous uh, planning scheme. But if you and if you would like to have this um, print sheet, I've actually created. So I created an ebook with four tips on writing. And in that ebook, there's a link to the uh, print sheet so you can download it and actually plan it yourself. And um, uh, it also has the side where you track your process how fast you write every day and um, that's also a great way to see like okay well for me my I average around thousand words per hour which is great it's a uh, great but I also know that I can write a lot faster but in order for me since I write like every day in order for me to write fast I need to know what's going to happen where I'm at in the story and uh, you should definitely check out the spreadsheet and check it out uh, check out the ebook yeah I guess my 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 last point to on how to become a more productive writer is to plan ahead I know I know 
a lot of us love painting, but if you plan on making writing your full time job or if you plan on writing a lot of books very fast, then you need to plan because editing and rewriting takes a lot of time. And also like either you do an outline before or you pants your way through and then you have to do an outline of the way like of what you did and like redo it because yes I have made this mistake and I've actually had to remake the outline and realize oh no that can't be there because then those characters they're not supposed to like each other yet or you know the storylines didn't hold up so I had to rewrite the entire manuscript it was um it was intense and I don't recommend doing that. So please ju at least try to plan. Like I don't plan out every scene. A lot of it is still spontaneous and fun. But I plan out a lot of things. And it has really helped me increase my product productivity and writing speed. If you like this episode, please uh, print screen it and tag me on social media. Or like it or follow it. Whatever you do, it really helps when you do this um thank you so much my name is natalie you've been listening to a year of writing